Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. It's uh, Monday morning here today. Uh, Monday mornings we uh, we do prac check every Monday morning. So when we do that, we're uh, we're checking any cows that are between 34 to 40 days bred to see if they're pregnant. Uh, typically, uh, two of our herds guys will do that. So today, a friend is back there in the pen. I probably can't quite see him from here, but. They'll, they'll go through all of our pens that uh, we're breeding cows in, they'll, they'll lock up the pen and then they'll go through their list and prac check the cows that need to be prac checked and they'll also breed the cows in that pen at the same time that need to be bred depending on how many cows they have to prac check on, on that day. So Eduardo is here too so he's writing down on the list if they're pregnant or not. Hi. <laughs> So they're, they're usually with with uh, three herds guys Monday morning and the, the third guy will take care of calving so uh, and do yeah do some other small things around the farm uh, he'll also help with breeding if there are a lot of cows to breed uh, I'm not sure what they have to do today I think they're prac checking around 40 cows today and 10 to 15 heifers and that's a pretty normal Monday for us uh, we we don't check with ultrasound they uh palpate i've never prec checked before i can breed cows but when they're about 34 to 40 days pregnant it, you have to be uh pretty experienced to be able to prec check cows uh, fairly quickly which uh, a few of our guys are can prec check that early we have uh, uh normally we have four or five herds guys so we have uh, five at the moment one of them is on vacation so there's three working today during the day and one is working at night and depending on which day of the week it is it's uh, usually two guys in the day and one at night and then the other one would have a day off or two days off typically uh, yeah a lot of you guys have asked about our breeding program so I'll, uh, we, so we use a program called cow manager and i can uh, head to the computer here later and Going to show you how that works and talk about how we use that uh, in our breeding program. So I'm in our office now. I thought I'd uh, show you guys the cow manager program here. So we we use a program called Dairy Plan for our herd records, and we use that along with uh, a program called Cow Manager. Uh, cow Manager also pulls data from Dairy Plan, but what Cow Manager does is the uh, the orange tags that the cows have in their left ear. That's tracking the cow's uh, rumination, eating time, uh, how active they are, if they're not active, the temperature, uh, and then the cow manager program has an algorithm in there to determine, uh, yeah, b by the movement of the cow's ear, uh, how many time or how many uh, hours or how many minutes a cow spends doing uh, certain things every day, like eating and ruminating. So then it. Uh, Puts that into a computer program. Uh, we can see group averages, herd averages, uh, individual cows, and uh, we use that for a few things. So we use that for our herd health, uh, or to help with our herd health. We can see if a cow is uh, eating or ruminating less, or if her temperature is uh, off from the herd, we'll get an alert to know that we have to check that cow out to see if she has any uh, issues going on. But we'll also use this for our breeding program. So like I, I mentioned in the barn there, all of our, our cows are bred with artificial insemination. So we don't have any bulls on our farm. So uh, what we can do with this program is it, uh, it tracks how active the cow is. And uh, together with the rumination, if her rumination drops and her activity goes up, that is a good sign that she's in heat. And this program will... Uh, alert us to all the cows that have been in heat and then our herds guys know that they when they come in the morning they'll look over that list they'll go to the pens and they will uh, check to make sure she actually was in heat because sometimes uh, the odd cow will pop up on here that actually wasn't in heat so they don't just go breed them they still will go look at the cows and we still do some uh, uh, manual heat detection also just visual heat detection as well along with the cow manager program but I'll show you what uh, what that looks like so this is a list of all the cows that were in heat this morning uh, we'll just click on the top one here I'm gonna show you what it looks like on a graph 
and how the system determines that she was in heat. So you can you can see here at the end, this is was uh, yesterday into today. So the red line is her activity. You can see that red line is up and down all the time, but here today it's been up more than normal. And then this light blue line, that's her rumination. And you can see that today that, ru that rumination dropped. So then the computer uses that information and uh, this blue line is what the computer calls her heat state and if a heat state goes into this uh, green section it'll give an alert that she was in heat so this cow would have been uh, yeah, in heat here this morning and I haven't checked but likely she was bred today we're trying to uh, breed the cows about 12 hours after her peak heat basically or trying to get in that window anyways uh, so that's how how uh, the system kind of tracks each individual cow. So we can also, I'll show you quick while we're in here. So we can look at her. So here the blue line is her rumination. The green line is her eating time. And then yellow time. Yellow is uh, not active. Orange is active and red is highly active. So you can see here today she was highly active. Back here, I think she may have, yeah, she was, she was also bred back here, but she was not pregnant from that uh, breeding it looks like, but you can see the same thing. Her activity was high, her rumination dropped, so likely it would have given them an alert at that point. So we use this information to try to catch our cows in heat so we can breed them at the optimum time. Uh, this, we've used this system here now for probably probably about five years now, I think. It's, uh, yeah, it's worked very well for us. It, I mean, it's not 100% uh, like, uh, like most things aren't. But it, it does uh, provide a big aid to our, our herd health guys to be able to uh, identify cows that uh, need to be bred and also identify cows that uh, may be having a, a health issue. But I thought I'd uh, kind of talk about our, uh, the rest of our, our breeding program, maybe uh, how we select our sires, uh, why we're doing uh, artificial insemination. Uh, could probably start there. So. I've, on uh, most uh, modern day dairy farms, there, there aren't any bulls around anymore. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, bulls can be dangerous. We would need to have several bulls on our farm to uh, be able to service all of our cows. And because they, one bull will be servicing multiple cows, you can have a spread of disease that way. Uh, but the, the main reasons that we, we uh, don't have bulls on our farm is uh, for genetic reasons. So. We, if we had a bull on our farm, we'd, uh, we'd be pretty limited to the kind of genetics that we could be exposing our, our herd to. But with artificial insemination, we're able to pick from uh, a very large number of bulls that are, some are proven, some are uh, genomic tested. So their genetics are tested and they determine that they will be, uh, they will make good daughters, good milking daughters. Uh, this, this really helps us uh, improve the, the uh, genetics in our herd very quickly. Whereas with, if we were using bulls, that would be a pretty slow process because we wouldn't have access to the, to the best uh, genetics out there. Uh, it also allows us to target uh, specific groups of cows or heifers with specific sires. So this allows us to pinpoint exactly which uh, heifers or which cows we want to breed with which bulls. So on our farm all of our heifers get bred with sorted semen. So what that means is uh, that semen that we're using on our heifers has a 90% chance of producing a heifer calf because of the majority of the the semen for that would produce bulls is taken out. And we do that because in theory our all of our heifers on our farm are our highest genetic animals. So we're targeting our highest genetic animals to try to uh, get heifer calves out of those animals again to more quickly improve our genetics on our farm. So we uh, about 90-ish uh, percent of our heifers will get bred with sorted semen. The other 10 percent will get bred with Angus. Um, then on the cow side about 15 percent of our cows get bred with uh, sorted semen and then 85 percent of our cows get bred with limousine semen to produce a, a crossbred black calf that would go into a a feeding situation for beef so it's the, the same idea there we uh, so we don't do genomic testing on our farm but we do uh, our the company that we work with select sires they rank our cows and our heifers 
based on their uh, their genetics and then our cows also on their milk production records. So then we're targeting our, our best animals, our best genetic animals with our with the best bulls and on the cow side we're we're uh, uh, going to the best 15% of our, our herd to uh, sorted semen and the rest is going to beef semen because we don't need the, that many heifer. We need, you know, we need a certain amount of heifers to come back in our herd and this is how we kind of uh, target that number or stay in line with that number. So we will breed with more beef if, we're, if uh, we think we're producing too many heifers or we'll breed less beef if we think we don't have enough heifers and that's that's all done by select sires they uh, have a program and they watch that pretty closely we're always trying to hit a target of about 50 to 55 heifer calves every month and they will uh, adjust that ratio of uh, beef semen to sorted semen to kind of get in that window uh, as far as uh, picking sires how we do that uh, it's ma mainly on net merit and uh, herd health profit dollars, net merit dollars, herd health profit dollars. So there are two indexes that are taking into account a multiple uh, things that they can see in the genetic of genetics of uh, cows, heifers, bulls, uh, milk production, protein, butterfat, uh, some health traits like mastitis, foot health, uh, the shape of the udder, all that has, a, has an effect on, on her genetic or her net merit score or her herd health profit dollar score. The herd health profit dollars focuses a little bit more on uh, cow health or cow longevity, which is uh, something that we're always uh, yeah, focusing on more and more, I guess. It, we're, we're still after high producing cows that are producing a lot of butter fat and protein, but we're more more looking into cows that are going to stay in our herd longer, be healthier, uh, be easier to breed back things like that uh, yeah just kind of shooting to have less younger animals in our farm and more older animals in, in our farm because the older ha animals the healthier animals they, they uh, produce milk longer as far as picking actual individual bulls we uh, work together closely with select sires and they they do a really good job at uh, pairing our heifers and cows with bulls that they think will match good with those cows and we're always rotate, rotating in new sires. Um, we use a mix of proven sires and genomic sires or yeah, genetic predicted sires, which basically uh, means uh, proven sires are sires that actually have uh, daughters already milking in the US or around the world and they have that data to show, okay, this is actually how her, her daughters are doing. But we also use uh, a lot of genomic sires, so they'd be cheaper because they're not proven yet. But based on their genetic testing, they determine that she's going to produce these kind of, kinds of heifers. And of course, not always 100%, but they're, they're pretty accurate. And we don't, all, we don't ever rely on one or two bulls for a year or a half a year. We're, we're relying on uh, multiple bulls and we'll switch them out after a few months to a new group of bulls. Uh, there's always uh, new ones uh, coming up uh, that are better than than the previous ones and yeah always trying to we're not trying to breed to the top bulls all the time we're trying to get in you know that close to the top we obviously don't want to use poor bulls on our cows but if you want to go for the top end all the time it's uh, it can get pretty expensive uh, but yeah we work pretty close with select sires on that and they they kind of uh, determine which which bulls that we should use on our farm and yeah we've worked together long enough now they know what kind of cows we're looking for they know what kind of uh, heifers we're looking for they they know what we want and they they have a lot better uh, understanding or knowledge of their bull lineup to decide okay these are these bulls will fit well with our our cows so maybe some of the repro stats i could probably share some of that with you Let's see what we got so we typically a few times a year uh, we'll we'll have select sires do a repro report and kind of uh, go through all of our reproductive uh, records that it, they also have access to and kind of benchmark ourselves against uh, other producers in the med Midwest but also against ourselves in previous years. So our, currently our uh, conception rate is uh, mid around the mid 40s. 
our uh, preg rate is uh, 30 to 35 percent typically in that range we're at like 32 at the moment it looks like but always in that 30 to 35 range our conception rate on heifers is typically around the 50 uh, mid 50s uh, currently around 51 percent it looks like so like I mentioned before all of our breeding is done through artificial insemination and that's all done through uh, our employees on the farm here, so our what we would call our herd guys, they do all of that uh, work on our farm. We're we're not uh, doing anything fancy. We try to keep it as simple as we can. Kind of give you guys a little bit of a rundown of our uh, uh, breeding or reproductive uh, program. Uh, yeah, definitely. If you have questions, uh, let me know. And hopefully, um, not a not a lot in this video other than me talking. Um, maybe we'll end the video with a shot of the cows in the barn or something. But if you guys have any more questions, uh, put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. And I appreciate you guys watching. Back in the barn here, I thought I'd end this video with a shot of the cows here as they, they just got uh, fed here for the afternoon for the second time here today. So I, I did want to mention here that uh, a lot of our, our uh, Reproductive success on our farm is down to our uh, herds guys and to our uh, uh, the people that are feeding and our nutritionist that works on our uh, rations. Uh, it's really, uh, it's not just one thing that uh, makes your uh, genetic program run well or do well. It's down to a lot of things like uh, the health of the cows, how uh, comfortable they are uh, and how good your uh, your your crew is that are breeding the cows so um, I know that uh, a friend and uh, our other herds guys they take a lot of pride in doing a good job and uh, uh, in 2020 we were awarded with uh, silver for uh, our, uh, our uh, reproductive numbers our reproductive success on our farm so the the dairy cattle reproductive council uh, hands out awards to uh, I believe 24 farms every year and they're uh, grouped in platinum, gold, silver, bronze, and we uh, we were in the silver group. We have some improvements yet, but I, yeah, I'm really proud of our guys that uh, we were able to uh, get even uh, be mentioned among some of the farms that were in those awards. Uh, yeah, re really proud of uh, the the good job that they do on our farm. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, continue that into the future, and we can continue to. Uh, to have uh, good and improving uh, dairy cows in our herd, like uh, this group of cows here. Um, yeah, re uh, re really proud of that, and uh, really proud of our guys. Um, I hope uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, yeah, not a lot of talking. I don't know how much you guys uh, like to listen to me talk, but uh, well. Uh, I'm trying to keep it a, a little bit uh, mixed up, you know, a little bit of talking, a little bit of the equipment, a little bit of the cows. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the videos and uh, yeah, if you have uh, comments or questions, I'd uh, love to answer them below. So we'll uh, hopefully see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.